Welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to animate your own character in Animatron. So the first thing we need to do is go to Animation Studio and start a new project making sure that we're working in design mode. So step one, we're going to draw a character to do the animation on. So I'm going to draw a really simple, um, almost South Park style, lo-fi character here. So I'm going to start off using pretty much just oval shapes for my uh, character's design. So let's go over here and let's go to our circle tool. Click on that and I'm going to change my fill color. And I'm going to choose um, a skin-like color. Uh, you can choose whatever tone or shade you fancy. And then I'm going to just draw, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and I'm just going to draw uh, an outline for my face. Okay, nice and simple. Uh, we now need some eyes, so I'm going to make sure I just click off there and click on uh, fill color again. I'm still on circle tool. Go to white, and I'm just going to draw uh, a white circle in there. And just as a quick shortcut, if you're on a Mac, you do Command D or on Windows Control D, and that means duplicate. So while that's selected, I can do Command D, and it doesn't look like anything different's happened. But if I now just drag, I'll see I've got two of those little eye shapes. So I've got two eyes uh, for stylistic purposes. You might want to keep them sort of overlapping slightly. And we can move them around and get them in the right place. Maybe make them a little bit, uh, oops, maybe make them a little bit bigger. Uh, it's entirely up to you. Uh, we're going to need some pupils in here. So I'm going to go back to my oval tool again, this time fill black and I'm just going to draw some little pupils in again command or control D to duplicate that and I can easily get another one the same size so I've got the start of a face um, I'm now just going to draw a little mouth so I'm going to use for this the uh, pen tool and a pen tool is quite good because it allows you to draw uh, curves but if you get it wrong you can just tweak and change um, the ends or the amount of curviness of the curve. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to click on that, uh, change my stroke color to black, 2 is probably a good thickness and all I need to do is click um, a, uh, a point and then I click another point further down and I kind of hold my mouse, I'm now dragging and as I drag and pull out it pulls a little curve shape and if I'm happy with that I can click off and there's my little quirky mouth which is selectable, I can move it around and if I wasn't happy I can use this other selection tool which is a point selector it's the one underneath the usual arrow and this allows me to actually select the individual start and end point of this curve so I could drag it all the way over here and I can use this handle that pulls out and that can change the curviness as well so I could have a frown a very flat face I could have a very smiley face or again I can go back to my sort of little I can go cheeky sort of side grin um, again it's your artistic style you choose what you want to do so I've now got all of the components together for my head so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually click on the main arrow tool the selector and drag a box around that to select all of those frames and I'm going to combine them together using the combine tool that's like a group tool I'm going to group them together and it calls it layer one and I'm just going to rename that to head okay we need a body so for the body I'm going to go back to my oval tool change my fill color to uh, let's say a nice blue t-shirt and I'm just going to drag uh, a blue and that will do for a body. Um, I want to put it behind the head so if I go down oh it's drawn it inside the head inconveniently so if I go into my um, layers area and click the little triangle next to that I can expand the head and I'll see that that shape 4 that I've just, drew, I've just drawn is in there so I'm actually going to click on that and drag it down and keep dragging it down until it comes out of the overall head shape so if I now go up and I was to close that arrow, I'll see I've got separate head and shape four. Um, and actually I could double click on the shape four and call it body. 
Okay, so now I've got a head and a body. Uh, so this little chap could do with some arms. So I'm going to, while well, I've got the same color selected, I'm just gonna draw an arm on the side. And I might rotate this slightly so I can use the rotation tool up here and just rotate and tuck it in. And I'm gonna do my Command or Control D again to duplicate it. Drag another one over here and just rotate it the other way slightly. So I've got some arms. They look a little bit like chicken wings at the moment. Um, so I might just rotate that in a bit further. And you know, again, this is up to you. you you're gonna to have to work out what looks right on your character. Uh, we could do with some hands. So, oh, strangely, look, I can see I've got one arm there, but I bet you the other arm is also again inside the head. It is. So I'm going to click in there and just drag it out of the head. I don't want to keep putting things in the head. Right, so I've got the, the two arms here, left arm, right arm. Okay, we're going to need some hands. Uh, for hands, I'm just going to use another skin coloured oval. So uh, I click my oval tool, click fill, and to try and get the same colour as the face, I can use this paint dropper tool. So I click on that and then click again on the face and it will select that exact colour. So now if I just draw a little circle down here for a hand, it's going to be the same colour that I had for the face. Command or Control D to duplicate it and I can pop another one over here. And again, if I just click off, it'd be nice if they were sort of behind the sleeve. So I'm just going to drag the order down, uh, so let's say shape 5, drag that down to the bottom, okay and that's gone beneath shape four. So that's now the left arm. So let's click uh, on, Let's if I, if I hold down command or control and then press uh, on shape five and shape four, so they're both highlighted, I can then again go to combine and I can rename that layer as left arm. And I'll do the same with the right. So let's click off that. Uh, so right, I don't know why it's got something selected in here. Let's click off completely. There we go. So I'm, I've held commands, I've clicked on those both, and I'm going to combine that, sorry, using this tool again, and call it right arm. So now I've got the start of my character. It's looking pretty good. Um, we're going to need to move him, I think, so I'm just going to click, drag, move him up a bit so I've got room for his legs. So let's say for his legs, let's use again an oval, maybe give him some red trousers, maybe make them a bit darker. And let's see, uh, an oval, maybe slightly rotated here. We'll do command for another one, command D, sorry, or control D for duplicate. Put another one there. And uh, those could do with being behind the body, so I can just drag the body up so that it's in front of them. And for feet, for shoes, I'm just gonna go with uh, maybe a dark gray and some little, either, if you do it, do it quite long, it looks like the foot is sort of uh, to its side, or if you do them uh, quite circular, it looks like the foot is pointing at you. So sort of you can choose how you want that. That looks like he's a little bit of both. Um, so I might just erase that one, click on it, press backspace, and I'm going to duplicate this one with Command D. So now I've got two, uh, two feet. And I can again drag those feet to go underneath the legs. And where's the other one gone? Of course it's back in the head, so I'll expand the head. Drag that one down, and drop it, Oop, didn't manage to catch that one. Drag it down, drop it beneath that leg there. So now I've got a, let's see, I've got my left leg and that's the left shoe. Okay, so that needs to come down there and that one goes up there. So that's my left leg, so I can select those together, combine, double click on that, call it left leg and select each of these, so I'll click off, select each of those, again I'm just holding down command on the Mac, could be control on Windows, to select both of those, press on the layer combine button and call that one right leg. 
So, uh, we have a character. Obviously, I could have put some hair on him if I'd wanted to. Um, I can change the colours. I, you know, there might be things I need to move around. I might still think that the arm isn't in exactly the right place. And But that's, you know, not a bad start. And, um, oh, I've noticed, though, that his hand isn't connected to his arm. That should have moved them together. Uh thought that would move it together if they are oh maybe if you select the whole thing and then move it that would move them together there we go so uh, that's the basis of my character uh, we're next going to go on to actually adding some animation to this character using the a, a tool called the bone tool but um, if you've just watched me do that and you haven't actually gone and drawn your own character then just take a moment now to do that pause the video have a go at that and then come back uh, in a few minutes time when you've done your own little cartoon character. Okay, so hopefully now you've got your own cartoon character and you are ready uh, to join me with animating this using a thing called the bone tool. And the bone tool allows us to actually put bones between the different joints so that when we grab one joint and move it, um, it moves the connected joints with it, which just speeds up the animation process massively. So, to do that, we first need to break apart um, all the various parts of our um, animated character. So, we just need to get each little bit and stretch it out so that they're all separate. They can be sort of near each other, but they have to be separate. Now for the head to keep it all as one, I'm actually going to select it all. Oops, do that. And I'm gonna convert the head to a movie clip, which should mean it's treated as one thing. So I just did right click, uh, convert to movie clip is what I press there. So hopefully the head now should remain as one object. Okay. So now we need to join these together using the bone tool. So over here, we've got this one that looks like a little puppet. That's our bone tool. We're going to click on that. I'm still in design mode, by the way. So I click on the bone tool and we're going to start at what we call the root, which is sort of ideally around the waist. This is where sort of all of the um, all of the joint movement sort of starts in the human body, kind of from the hips. So we're going to start here. And I just click once. And now I've got this um, red triangle. And I'm going to go down to the left hip. And then I'm going to go to the top of the leg. And I'm going to go to the bottom of the leg. To the ankle and to the toe. And now I just press escape. And that finishes that chain of bones. Uh, I need to do the next leg. So again, I just click. If I click over... Um, if I hover my mouse, it should go grey or grey circle. So I click on that and that's going to join on from that point. Go to the right hip, top of the right leg, bottom of the right leg, the ankle of the right foot and the toes in the right foot. And now again, I just press escape to finish that chain. The next thing we need to do is go up to uh, between the shoulders. So I'm going to click here, go up to here and from there, I'm going to go to the left shoulder. Oops, that went off, didn't mean to do that. So let's go back here. Let's click on that grey dot and go to that left shoulder. Hmm, that's not working. Tell you what, let's go from that. Let's hover on that grey dot and go all the way to the top of the left arm then. That's better. Down to the bottom of the left arm, to the top of the right hand, bottom of the right hand, press escape. And do the same from here. So we're going to hover over again to the grey circle, click. Go to the top of the right arm, bottom of the right arm, top of the right hand, bottom of the right hand. Press escape. Now we just need to do the head. So we're just going to go um, from the uh, top of the torso to sort of the base of the neck and from there to the top of the head. And press escape. And that has now set up our bone structure. Now we can do a few things. Um, we actually need to obviously um, join our uh, our parts, or our limbs, back together without all these gaps. We also need to set the angles of rotation that we're going to give to each of the different parts of our 
uh, person. So we're going to start off by doing that on the head. So if I just click on this bone, uh, I end up getting a few controls. Uh, these red ones show how far we are going to permit this to rotate. So I'll show this in practice. This little grey one here is our rotation angle. And currently I can move his head all the way over there or all the way over there, which is a little bit far for a human. So let's see, it, that's probably about as far as you'd go to that side. So for that to work, we have to move this handle up here. So that's as far as we're going to go that side. We can't go any further now, it won't let us. And we'll do the same on this side. So we'll say, OK, about there. So I drag this one up. And now he can rotate, but no more. Hmm, that's a bit restrictive. Let's take that one down. So he can rotate from there to there. OK, from there to there. That's not too bad. We also want to move um, him in a bit. So if I drag from the end point and down, I just shove him back underneath the body. So now he can rotate. Oops, oops. let's click back in there. So we should be able to now see the rotation. You can go from there to there. It's OK. It's not too bad. OK, so that's, that's the rotation of the head. So now we're going to do the same with our arm. So I click on the arm bone. And again, how far should an arm go? Well, you should be able to put probably a wave. Might take you up here somewhere, maybe even higher. So maybe that's our top. And probably can go, probably not that far back, maybe about as far as here. So let's drag, oops, let's click back in there. Drag this red one down. OK, so now I can spin that around there. That's not too bad. And let's see the hand. Let's click on the hand. The hand is going to want to be able to rotate probably about right, actually. So that's fine. Let's shove the hand back up into the uh, into the uh, arm. And let's shove the arm one, if I click on there, uh, a bit up to the shoulder. And let's click on this left shoulder one, which we haven't enabled the rotation on at the moment. That's fine. We'll just drag that over. OK. So let's just see. I might want to rotate that slightly. That's my starting point. And maybe I'll click on this and just adjust. Oops. Just allow that a little bit more rotation than he's currently permitted so that that can go. Yeah, it's probably more realistic, actually. Click in there, bring it in, bring it down a bit. OK, good. Uh, so we're going to do it on this arm as well. So again, just click in the arm. That lets us set our rotation. So again, he can probably go quite high up and probably to about there. So let's drag that one down. So now I can use my gray tool. I can rotate up and round. Lovely. Let's check his hand out. His hand can rotate that way and that way. That's fine. And then we can just uh, shift that one up so it's nearer his arm. And on this one, we can move this arm in a bit. We'd, sorry, we need to move. This, we need to click on this bone to drag that over there. Okay. Now his legs. So uh, we're going to do the feet first. So the feet currently can rotate like, ooh, that's a bit much, maybe as far as there. So let's drag that one around there. So we can go from there to there. OK, good. And we can just bring his feet up to his leg. Let's do the same on this one. So we'll start there. He can move probably no higher than about there. So let's put his upper limit there. And he can go down, it's probably about right. So let's now click on the ankle and drag that leg in. Let's look at this leg. His leg should can go, he can do a bit of a high kick and he can go back on himself, a little jig. Yeah, that's probably about right. That's fine. So let's put that where it is. Click on his hip, drag his leg back in. Let's get the same angle on here. Nice high kick, back on itself, lovely. Let's click on his. Uh, on his, oops, let's stop clicking there. Nope, nah, escape, escape. Delete that if I can. I'll just do undo, command Z. Let's click in his hip. Let's drag from the bottom of the, click on the hip, drag from the bottom of the hip up to bring his leg in. 
and again we can click on his uh, hips here as well and look at how much we're going to let them rotate so it's a bit oh, that's why so maybe he might want to rotate his legs he can do a bit of a lateral swing as well so I click in that one too sometimes it's a bit fiddly when they're right next to each other you just have to keep persevering okay lovely it's not bad so we've animated we've we set up all the bones and now we're going to see what the benefit of doing that is so if I now go back to um, my tool I see that I've now got a thing called skeleton one which is this character skeleton one is the whole of my um, my little chap I've got these leftover empty um, uh, group labels from before so I can just press backspace to delete those don't need those anymore and I got my skeleton one I'm gonna call him Dave so I got Dave and I'm ready to animate Dave so I'm gonna to go to my animation I'm now in animation mode so any changes I make should now get recorded so if I move my timeline forward slightly um, I could uh, easily obviously move Dave that's pretty standard so now it's just going to animate that movement that's fine but if I want to like make Dave wave for example I can move my uh, timeline forward and I can just click on a hand I'm gonna zoom in slightly to show you a bit better just click on his hand oops didn't mean to do that let's click off let's click on that hand and if I move the hand it should do all of the other animation for me so I'm gonna move it forward a little bit more again let's click on that hand and move that hand up to do a wave um, and it's a bit it's a bit fiddly you get used to it and let's move on again a bit more let's move him down a bit again and maybe down to sort of the bottom okay it's a bit his hand seems to have kinked around a little bit so we might yeah there's some some you know I haven't quite set that up quite perfectly uh, so but let's just see how that would work so it moves over and it does a little wave sort of it's become a bit detached which is a bit unfortunate uh, let's see if the legs fare any better let's try a little a little kick so let's move him oops so let's do a little jump so uh, I'm gonna zoom out and to make him jump he's going to want to start with his sort of legs together and then he's going to maybe want to sort of uh, bring his body down perhaps let's see if we can do that oops click off can I make his body move down I can't do that I might be able to bring his legs okay maybe not but let's now take his legs out slightly so I'll do it just by his feet move him up and then forward a bit more let's move his legs out even more oops drag click and drag his leg let's click off that why can't I move his okay now oh, maybe I'm, I'm getting near the it does get a bit jerky you have to be a bit careful when you move it sometimes it's a bit frustrating but if you persist you'll get there let's move him up a bit let's move him on a bit and up a bit more and with his leg out there and now let's move him down a bit so let's bring him down put his legs back in a bit oops and take him right back down to the ground and his legs can be back to standing again and let's see if that that should do that animation for us so if I press play he moves does a bit of a wave and then he does a sort of jump and notice that all I really had to do was drag the feet and it actually moved the legs appropriately for me if I wanted to have him sort of looking up now we could move the timeline forward a bit I'm just gonna move that over there I've moved the timeline forward let's have his head uh, look over here and maybe he might then start pointing at something so we can put his hand out and maybe he's having a little point and then we can just put his hand back again and his head back again and let's see how that works so he's done his jump oh, his head is sort of in the wrong place from the beginning now so but his head does go back nicely so you know it's not too difficult to do you just sort of put the start and end points that you want there he is he moves along and 
jumps, putting his head back all the way, has a little point, and brings his head and his arm back again. So I've done a bit of a quick job on this. You can see it's not perfect, but hopefully you've got some of the main principles involved. Certainly you will have learned to draw um, a character and then this bone tool, it's a bit fiddly, takes a bit of practice. Um, you might find that actually using fewer or more joints might make things easier, so do some experimenting. Um, but once you've got the pieces together, then actually doing the animation is incredibly easy. You just move him where you want him, put the legs somewhere else, and the rest is done for you. All of the other sort of animation just happens. And that really is saving you loads of time. You're not having to animate each individual bit. It's doing all of the in-between animation on your behalf, which is an incredibly useful thing. So go have some fun, invent some characters, see if you can do a little scene with maybe two different characters, uh, having them walk around or move, um, and, and learn, play, learn, discover what the bone tool does.